Okay, where I left off before was the guy was bad and a lot of people disliked him. Now, you have to decide on your villain. You don't want to make him so obvious that he can be picked out right away. But usually in a mystery, there are other characters whose lives he has affected in a major way or a minor way. So you never want to make your killer obvious to the reader. You want them to go along with you and try to catch the clues that you leave them. And you must leave clues. Now, remember that I'm laying down <laughs> On the bed, just relaxing while I'm talking to you guys. It's, you know how that is. But anyway, you want to leave clues. Okay, like maybe the guy has has a wife. And, you know, and maybe he has a family. And so in that case, in that instance, you feel sorry for him. But th because of the things he's doing, it's causing problems. And eventually he gets killed. So now you have to bring in other people other minor characters who also this guy's life has affected. So then you give the reader a chance to, you know, to see these people and, and wonder, did this person kill him? Because look what he did to him. So you want to have, there's backstories, even in the story, backstories in other people's lives of what he has done, affected them. And then in the end, you're going to, you know, reveal by all the evidence and everything that's, that's showing up and the police going through and everything and the lawyers or whatever who's trying to defend. Maybe a wrong person was accused of the crime because this person also had a, you know, a bad relationship with this person. And it's fixed so that the, the crime falls on him when really he's not the one that did it. But you want the reader to go through all of this and try to decipher exactly who the killer is. So you, you need a lot of characters that this guy's life has touched in a major way or a minor way. And then you build on each of those until you can decide, ah, that's the killer. Got it? I'm sure you do. Bye-bye now. Be back.